There he is. I got him. I got him. There he is, baby. We stuck a good one. So let's dive right into redfish, which are one of my favorite species on the planet to target, and I like to do it by sight fishing. Check that out right there, folks. Sight fishing, for those of you that are new to it, is where I'm actively looking for the fish before I, uh, before I, I hook the fish. Look at how clear this water is. So I'm, I'm looking for a fish, I'm gonna present a bait to the fish, and then I'm gonna watch that fish come over and eat the bait. It's one of the most exciting ways to fish that you can possibly do. There, there go in the other direction. There he is, I got him. Fish on, baby, fish on. So in this video, I'm gonna give you five tips that are gonna help you become a better sight fisherman. First tip we're gonna go over is equipment. Now this is pretty important and I'm gonna tell you what I wanna do. So as far as your rod and reel setup, okay, I've got a 4,000 size reel. This is a pin fierce. You don't have to have a, uh, a pin fierce. You can use another 4,000 size reel, but the reason that I use a larger reel for inshore fishing, which is a 4,000 size, is because I want to be able to spool that reel to the max with super light line. And so with this one, I've got 10 pound test braid. What that small diameter in, in the braided line is going to allow you to do is make maximum casts, casting distance. I think that was a good enough cast. So when I'm cruising the flat, so most of the time when you're sight fishing clear water, you're going to see these redfish from a, a long ways off. And you want to be able to make as long a cast as possible because the closer you get to these fish, the better chance they will see you and spook and not eat. There he is. I got him. I got him. And so with this 10 pound braid on a, on a big reel, it's going to allow me to cast extremely far, which is what I want. If you spooled it with 20, you're not going to be able to get to the fish most likely. And so, uh, and, and if I'm using a smaller reel, like a 2,500 size or something, I'm not going to be able to put as much line on it. And so therefore I'm not going to be able to cast it as far. Now with the rod, I'm using a seven foot two medium extra fast. Now this rod is super strong throughout, but it has a very quick tip. I've made another, uh, an entire video on rods of how you want that super quick tip, but you want the backbone throughout. That allows me to quickly set that hook, get that hook set in the fish's mouth, but you've got the backbone throughout the rod. To, with a redfish, you're gonna need that to where it goes all the way through his skin, and so you're not gonna lose many fish. If you had a super flimsy rod, like a spaghetti rod or something, you're gonna miss a lot of hookups because you're not gonna pull that hook through his mouth. So this is my basic setup, seven foot two, rod with a 4,000 size reel, 10 pound braided line. All right, so let's jump into number two. <clears throat> and number two is location. All right, where am I going to look for these fish? Well, if you know anything about redfish, they can be just about anywhere, even up into fresh water. And if you watch my channel, I have caught redfish in the craziest places. And one of the reasons why is because I'm always looking for them. All right, most people are, are not observant. They're just fishing, but I am always looking and I'm looking in the weirdest places. So because of that reason, the most important thing for me with sight fishing redfish is having good conditions. And so before I go out, I wanna make sure that I'm watching the weather closely. And so what I'm doing, I'm pulling up Google Maps and I'm looking, if I have a south wind, I wanna find a south bank somewhere that I can just ride and look. You see, redfish love to get on banks of any kind. If you have a, a bank where, where it's calm, it, it's good conditions, you can see a long ways, you got high sun, odds are you're gonna run into some fish somewhere on that bank. Now, obviously some banks are better than others to ride and look, but I will ride any bank. It doesn't matter, I will ride the craziest locations right next to people on the beach, right next to boat launches, it does not matter. Redfish can be anywhere. People overthink it. 
look at the weather, make sure you've got a calm bank. So if the wind's blowing 20, that's okay. Just make sure you get on a bank where the wind's blowing at that bank so it's knocked down on the bank and you can see. And don't go out there and waste your time. If, if the night before you see that it's gonna be cloudy, you know that's not a great day to sight fish. So save your days. Don't go out there if it's super cloudy. Make sure you're gonna have high sun, you're gonna be on a bank that is super calm, and you, that you know that the water's gonna be clear, you can see for a long ways, and that gives yourself an opportunity to, to catch these fish. And it doesn't really matter if you're in a boat or on a beach. I've caught plenty of them walking the beach. Number three, it, let's talk about bait. All right, this is uh, super important. So if you're, uh, if you're an artificial lure guy and you uh, want to sight fish redfish, my favorite setup, hands down, is a, uh, a very light jig head with a Berkeley gulp shrimp. Now, I, I love the white gulp shrimp and I love the nuclear chicken gulp shrimp. Those are two of my favorite. It has a, a scent to them that really attracts that redfish. And, and when you're sight fishing, you know, I like that scent aspect, especially if I'm in clear water, because sometimes that little extra scent is gonna allow that redfish to go over there and eat it. I can also throw that Berkeley Gulp shrimp on a jig head a very long ways. And so uh, I really like the way that it hits the water with a light, uh, a light jig head. It doesn't spook the fish. And it, I feel like it give, I have confidence in, in it. And ultimately you wanna have confidence in the bait that you're throwing. Now you can also throw other stuff. There are other soft plastics that work. Some people use gold spoons. Some people use uh, you know, different companies that make different soft plastics. Totally cool. Gulp is just my preference. I've, I've used it, I've been successful, I've won tournaments with it. I've always had a lot of success with it. And so when you have success with something, you get confident in something, it's what I like to throw. Now another trick that's gonna be super successful if you're not worried about artificial lure is catching, uh, catching some live bait in sight fishing with live bait. So like if I'm riding the flats and I wanna pitch a live mullet at these redfish, uh, you know, like a live finger mullet or something, that's gonna really improve your chances of hooking up if you're not a, a, an artificial lure guy. So uh, you can sight fish with live bait. I've sight fished with live shrimp before, live mullet, live bull minnows. When I used to run charters and I had clients that didn't care if they uh, used artificial lures or live bait, a lot of times we would use live bait just to get my clients on fish. And so uh, that's a great way to do it if, if you can uh, catch the bait and if you're okay with using live bait. So. Tip number four. Now this may seem really basic, but you would not believe how many times I've been out running charters telling the clients, hey, we're gonna sight fish tomorrow. The client's even asking if we can sight fish. And they show up and they don't have a pair of polarized glasses. Guys, this is the most important thing you can have when sight fishing right here. Now I use Waterland sunglasses, been happy with them. They sponsor my main channel. But I've won tournaments with Waterland sunglasses, sight fishing, but can't complain. I've been super happy. Super simple tip, but you wouldn't believe how many people don't do this. <laughs> and so get you a pair of polarized sunglasses before you start sight fish. Now the last tip I'm going to give you is, uh, you know, and there are plenty other tips I can give you on sight fishing. I may make a part two on this, but the last tip I'm going to give you is casting. Presentation is probably... Uh, you know, that's what's going to uh, either get you hooked up on the fish or either spook the fish. And so what I like to do when, uh, when I'm presenting a bait to these fish, if the redfish is moving, let's say I see him from a long ways off and he's moving, I like to lead this guy a long ways, all right? So let's say I, ha I like to even sometimes have the bait already sitting way out in front of him in the direction he comes. And then when he gets about five feet away, I like to just maybe pop it one time and a lot of times he'll run over there and eat it because he's not spooked, okay? Now, he didn't hear that bait hit the water. You let him a long ways. Now, if you're fishing clear water and you make a cast and it lands one foot in front of this red fish's face, he's gonna dart the other way unless he's just super hungry, super aggressive and fired up, which they're not always like that. So you wanna give yourself an opportunity, make the right cast. Now, if this red fish is sitting still, Okay, let's say a lot of times they'll just be sitting still like that. 
and they'll just be chilling. All right, I like to throw way over the top of him. All right, maybe a little bit to, to uh, in front of his nose, a couple feet, but way past him. And then I'll reel this bait up and drop it about five feet from him and then just work it one or two times like that until he notices it. Okay, again, if you throw that bait and it drops two feet from him and he's got his nose in the ground, a lot of times he's going to spook. All right, you don't want to spook these fish. So making a great cast is <clears throat> very vital to your success when sight fishing redfish. And I see so many people that I fish on the boat with that they really cast too close to the fish. And that's one reason you see me I, I'm in these tournaments, and you can go watch all my tournament videos. My hookup ratio is pretty high when I throw because my presentation is good. Let's say that... Um, you uh, see a school of fish and there's like 10 fish coming down the bank, which happens all the time when you're sight fishing. Once again, all right, you, you see these fish coming, you wanna throw way out here because those fish are coming. You don't want that bait, you don't want them to hear that bait hit the water when those fish get you know five feet from it, bump it and work it super slow. All right, you've got your bait sitting on the bottom, you wanna bump it off the bottom like one time and then let it sit. And if you see that fish dive down on it, sometimes just hold it there. Don't even move it and he'll come and pick it up. All right, but if he doesn't pick it up, maybe bump it one more time and let's see how he reacts to it. Don't overwork your bait. You don't have to. These fish, uh, uh, there's a term called dead sticking. Works great with sight fish and redfish. Just leave it there. And they will, if they see it bump, move the first time, they'll come over there and put their nose on it a lot of times just leave it there. Just leave it there. Don't spook the fish because if you do too much, he may run. He may get spooked. So, uh, guys, that's my five tips. Sight fishing redfish. It's something, like I said, I'm passionate about. I do it all the time. I fish tournaments, have fished tournaments for the last 15 years. It's probably something that uh, I have had um, more success with on my main channel than any other type of fish. So uh, I do have a lot of knowledge in the sight fishing redfish category. Uh, if you want to, uh, if you have any other species, that you want me to go over, have any other tips or tricks that you want me to talk about, please comment below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. As always, appreciate you tuning in, guys. If you have not subscribed to the channel yet, uh, subscribe to the channel, shoot me a thumbs up. Hope each and every one of you have a great week.